G'day guys and welcome to today's vlog or today's video. This video is going to be completely Q&A based. I just want to give a shout out to Eric Hoffman for giving me the idea to do a Q&A style video. So every Sunday, today is Sunday, I'll be doing Q&A Sundays. That rhymes. I guess it rhymes with every day. But today is Q&A Sunday. You ask questions, I answer them. I ask you guys to leave some questions in the comments down below in yesterday's video. You left some questions, so I'm going to answer those, and I'm probably going to answer some questions that I've already responded to in the comments below as well in previous videos, just so that other people may be interested in those questions, as well. and they probably didn't see the response, so I'll just answer that just for everybody else as well. But the first question comes from Eric, and the question he asked is, have you ever carried... By the way, I've got all the questions here. Have you ever carried a first aid kit on my bicycle tours? To be honest, I don't think I have. I've been pretty unprepared. My very first bike tour was by myself in Australia and it lasted three days. It was a complete failure. I didn't edit at all. I didn't vlog it, but it was a miserable time to be honest. To be bluntly honest, I packed more clothing than I did food and water. It was quite a disaster. But that is about that bike tour and specifically the question was first aid kit. I haven't. I don't think I've ever had to use a first aid kit either. Maybe I brought along a band-aid or something along those lines in terms of like my very first tour. But other than that, I really haven't used one. Okay, so the next question comes from Susan Da Silva. Sorry if I pronounce your name wrong. I'm really bad with names, so sorry about that. But the question is, how do you afford to give free shipping on some of your items? It's a pretty simple and straightforward question. Most of my items I sell buy it now with the best offer and I charge shipping on top of that. However, sometimes when I may include free shipping is because most of the time the item is a really expensive item and I can afford to lose $8 or $12 on shipping for that item if I'm selling it for like $150 plus. Sometimes if I do do free shipping on an item that is say like a $50 item or something, I might increase the price a tiny bit, maybe increase it by half the amount of what I'd pay for shipping. But to be honest, I don't really like doing free shipping. It just, it's just not what I do. I like to just, I just like to have a really good and cheap buy it now price with the best offer that's really competitive. And with eBay, they don't show free shipping or they do show free shipping, but they don't show the shipping cost with the cost of the item on the homepage. So either way, you're still gonna make sales so it's not really that much of a big deal. You just got to make sure you know the cost of shipping if you're going to do free shipping and just count that into. Okay, so next question comes from Anthony. Anthony asks, where slash how did you get those awards for yourself on the back wall? High school? Well, I think he means these awards here, as you can see. As you can see, I've got a frame there with awards in it. And then I have these awards up here as well. And yes, these are from high school. These are also kind of from high school and also state competition for cross country and long distance running. I like my running. That's my awards for that. And there's also some awards over there as well, which are some medallions and medals and stuff. Some gold and silverware there. But these are all from running so this one here is from 2015 victorian country championships men's under 20s this was for the 10,000 meters so a 10k run and these ones here are just first ribbons this is like the flag you get for coming first seconds and thirds i do have another frame of ribbons like this but i don't know where it's gone this is a dated vision board which i think i might update soon that's from like a couple of years ago. It's kind of irrelevant now. But these awards here are... <laughs> this one up here is a leadership award for being bus captain. And to be brutally honest, I never really did much for that job at all. I put my hand up. I got the bus captain badge and I didn't do anything else for the rest of the year. <laughs> also got a few of these commitment and respect awards, as you can see. A few more behind this light here. Commitment Award, Commitment and Respect, Achievement Award, Attendance Award, which is basically anyone can get that, just don't wag and go to school every day, right? Yeah, I seem to have gotten a lot of Commitment and Respect Awards. Oh, that's just some of it. I have some other ones hidden away as well in some drawers and stuff, but I like to think I'm really good with respect. I like to give respect to my elders and stuff like that, and also commitment as well, but to be honest, sometimes it's tough to keep commitment, but it is something that I'm working on, but yeah. That is 
what the awards are. Okay, so the next question comes from Sujo Cat. Oh, I'm sorry if I just got that so wrong. Hey Cody, sorry my suggestions didn't work, but they're great for stickers and, and other textures. Uh, yeah, that's all right. No worries. <laughs> I tried my hardest to get those shoes clean. To be honest though, guys, let me update you with those shoes. I did just put them up like literally a couple of hours ago. And I put like a little text mark over it to make it like 98. One is darker than the other. But you can't see or can't tell that it was an $18 or $8 item. And they just sold. They already sold for 85 bucks, So that's awesome. But getting back to the question, could you please talk about FBA on Amazon a bit? How did you do it? And how did you register to be a seller? What app do you use? Thanks. No worries. I'll touch base a little bit on this. I want to make some videos in future explaining and, and teaching you guys how to do it specifically for Australians. But first thing I will mention is to head over to my main man, Reezy Resales. He has taught me quite a lot. He has taught me almost everything there is to know about specifically selling used books on Amazon through Amazon FBA. FBA is Fulfillment by Amazon, which is where you send in a bulk amount of items to Amazon warehouses. I send them into the US market ones, and then they control everything, shipping, customer service, sales of the item and everything. It is really laid back and quite amazing of course you pay some fees for that but it is totally worth it when you're in another country like Australia but what I'm gonna do for you guys is drop a link down below for this specific video here this is really good content it's like an hour and ten minute long video how to sell books on Amazon FBA for profit book selling tutorial for beginners quick start guide really good video I'm gonna link this down below in the comments so you guys can watch this I'd rather have someone as professional like this dude explain it to you than myself as I am slowly learning the process and I'm learning from mistakes and stuff so I want to ensure that you guys don't make mistakes from my advice so watch that it gives you the basics to learning how to start up your Amazon account and stuff like that it is different in Australia and to be honest, I can't really remember exactly how I set it up. It took a little bit of effort to try and get it to work because you gotta you gotta get around the taxes and all that stuff because it's in a different country and there's different rules and regulations. And actually I'm using these books here as a tripod and this is inventory that's going out to FBA very soon once I hit the 20 kilogram mark, which is the max amount you can send out to Amazon. So it costs around 184 bucks to send out a maximum of a 20 kilogram box to Amazon. And to be honest, for me, it is worth it. I try to send out at a minimum of a thousand Australian dollars worth of stock. It turns out to be $800. And that's profit after fees and everything. So from my experience, doing it like that, it is worth it. Also, the other part of the question, ask what app do I use and it's good old Amazon seller app so it's this app right here it is pretty straightforward and easy to use very user friendly as you can see my sales are non-existent because I have sent out a few shipments but I'm just waiting for them to hit the Amazon warehouse they should be in in the next day or two so say for example you want to scan a product you can let's say we want to scan this book here we just found this in the thrift it's a cool subject might well, be worth some dollars. So you just click in the top right corner here, there's a camera there. And you can do this with the cover and just scan it like that. It doesn't give you the exact item, you might need to scroll through and find it. And you can scroll through and eventually find it. So this is the item here. So it's selling for 41 USD, 44 FBA. But you can also scan more specifically the barcode and that will give you the exact item right there. So the next question comes from Holly Roberts, and the question is, what do you do about dead stock? Things that won't sell, do you have much dead stock? Do you relist with different photos, lower the price? Thanks. To be honest, I don't have as much dead stock as I did in the beginning stages of selling online because I've learned what sells and what doesn't sell from experience of buying things that don't sell and become dead stock, and often, if they're items that are literally like really 
dead stock and something that aren't worth literally anything i'll just re-donate it back to the op shops or the thrift stores if i re-donate to savers for example so savers provide this donation system where you can donate a small bag or a plastic bag size of clothing for example and you get a five percent off amount for each time you do that and you can save that up to 20 percent but what I try to do is do my research and due diligence and make sure what I'm buying isn't going to turn into dead stock and just do my research. Going over to the eBay sold listings, seeing what items are hot, what items are selling in each category, what brands are really good and buying that stuff instead of just buying stuff out of the blue thinking you know it might sell and stuff. I just try and go for the really high-end stuff and most of the time it's selling and if you consider things sitting around in inventory for quite a long time as dead stock more than a couple of months yeah you can try lowering the price you can do sales if you have an ebay store you can do sales on your inventory that also helps to bring more traffic into your ebay store as well i found and it helps you make sales that way you can do best offer i find that if i do buy it now best offer that helps because someone might send you an offer of a lower price and if you just want to get the item out then you can get it out but you want to make sure that you're doing really good keyword research and putting in really good keywords into the title so then people can find your item making sure there's no misspelt words the brand is spelt correctly etc also putting in information correct information into the description and also filling out the specifics category in the items listing making sure you fill out the brand if it's a long sleeve short sleeve the color of the item the pattern the material size and everything about it i was reading in a magazine that was sitting on the bench of a library it had like the dude of ebay whatever the ceo is of ebay and he gave all these tips on how to be a successful seller on ebay i probably should have taken a photo of the page but he basically said all that sort of stuff there yeah just to prevent dead stock you can try that sort of stuff but to be honest sometimes some items might not just sell and you just gotta deal with it and it's just part of the learning process. You're going to buy some duds here and there. And it's just a learning experience. You just learn not to buy those items again. And just look out for the really good ones. But I hope that answers your question. So the next question comes from Craig Hill. Thanks for the question. He asked, hey Cody. Yeah, could you let us know your true thoughts about FBA? I guess I kind of covered on that a bit earlier on. It is worth it for me. You just got to make sure that what you're sending in is going to be more profitable than... The shipping amount especially if you're coming from australia so sorry craig is from australia i didn't read that part of the question he says is it worth it for us here in australia to be honest for me in my experience it's worth it uh, then he goes on to ask your tips for increasing sales during slow periods promoted listings sales etc basically hit the nail on the head there and it's kind of what i answered back there with holly's question as well you just got to do that sort of stuff. Will you do a live show soon with Raken or Bonafide to talk about differences between here and the US with eBay? To be honest, Craig, I did do a video with those guys. I'm not sure if it's on YouTube, though. I couldn't find it. I was looking for it. I did an interview with them guys a couple of years ago, maybe, or a year ago. It was back when I was not so confident with the camera. But I will try and find that video. And I'll put a link down below. So you can watch that. We talked about that sort of stuff. About the differences with Australia and the US. In regards to resale and stuff. So if you're interested in that video. And if I do find it. I will put it in the description below. Next question comes from Jason Brook. He asks. Hey Cody. If a shirt has a size on it. Do I really need to do all the measurements? Thanks. To be honest, Jason, I really think you do because sometimes some items just fit differently. If you have a small slim fit, it's going to fit different than just a small. And different brands have different fittings as well. And if some people aren't aware of the differences with different brand sizing and they just go off a generic size small, then it might fit a little different. So you just want to make sure you include all the measurements. That's also going to ensure the likelihood of not getting a return because you've provided all this solid evidence up front and it gives the customer less reasons for them to return the item. 
So you just want to make sure you just provide the measurements. In my honest opinion, that's what I like to do. But thank you for the question, Jason. Next question comes from Leslie Spears. Thanks for watching the videos, Leslie. I really appreciate it. Always commenting on like basically every video, so thank you. So the question is, can you tell me what camera you're using? So this is one of the questions that I did reply to in the video or the comments down below. But just in case other people are interested, um, I use this camera here. It's just the Canon 1000D. I did pick this up from the thrift and I did shoot a video of this when I did pick it up. I paid a hundred bucks for it. I was considering reselling this just recently as well for some profit, but I really like it. It um, really takes some really good photos. So I definitely recommend this camera and I'll have a link down below if you want to purchase this on Amazon. It is an affiliate link. So I get a small commission, but you don't have to do that. You can just thrift it, eBay it or find it somewhere cheap or just use your phone to be honest you don't really need a camera like that but it does a job for me so nearing the end of the questions Zachary asked a question he says I got a monthly cap of 10 items or two and a half grand do you happen to know how to increase that to be honest it's a really annoying time and and it's key to just be patient I guess in terms of this because when I did start I was in the same boat and I was like oh I've got my 10 items up and I can't put up any more I just want to get this thing going and it was really a demotivating sort of situation but what you want to do is just prove to ebay that you're a legitimate seller and that you're willing to put in the effort to sell on ebay and just get all your items up that you possibly are allowed to and then just start hassling ebay send them some messages and call them up and ask them if you can increase your sales limit and eventually over some time they will let you do it they might even tell you that you gotta wait for a certain amount of time until they'll increase your sale limit amount but just stick in there stay persistent and stay consistent and and eventually you'll get there and you'll be selling hundreds of items before you know it but the last question comes from Robert and this is a question that I did answer in the comments below but just in case everyone else is interested he asked by the way mate do you follow an AFL team and yes I do, I follow the Bombers. If you guys remember in my previous video I picked up this Bombers hat. So I followed Essendon Football Club. And I think Robert, you guys beat us. You, you said you barracked for the Crows and they bet us I think in round 21 or whatever it was. By well, quite a bit. So I was a little disappointed to see that. But go the Crows and go the Bombers. But that is it for today's video everyone. Thank you for watching. If you do have any questions and you want to get them into next week's Sunday Q&A then periodically leave some questions in the comments below on videos throughout the week and I'll be sure to answer it in next Sunday's video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.